I'm Kelsey. I'm Jackie. I'm Anna. And this is What in the Wildlife, the show where I describe animals and, and we draw them. <laughs> If this is your first time here, the way that this works is that I have selected an animal that I think Jackie and Anna don't know about. Which is probably true because we don't know about most animals. So I'm going to give them a physical description of the animal and based on that description, they're going to try and draw the animal. And we'd love it if you try your hand at home as well. This is just fun. And along the way, you're going to learn lots of fun facts about the animal I have selected. Woo! Are you ready for today's animal? Well, I am. I am as well. Today's animal is the shifak. What in the shifak are you talking about? <laughs> shifak is spelled S-I-F-A-K-A. -A. Shifak. Well, I'd like to know what you think it might be, but to help you along, I'm going to give you style icons, and then you can warm up your creative juices by drawing it based on nothing. You ready? My favorite way to warm up my juices. Your style icons are Rowan Atkinson, aka Mr. Bean, the Gelflings from Dark Crystal, Kim Kardashian wearing a white fur coat, and an Olympic long jumper. See what you got. <laughs> um, mine just looks like a person. Okay. Hold on, I have to give mine a quick body. Uh, this looks like. <laughs> Is it on a tree? It's whatever you want out of life. <laughs> So I have two legs? Yes. <laughs> what you can't tell is that they're on opposite sides of the body, so it can do like this around a tree. And you go up, scurry up, scurry down. Okay. I was thinking of more of a very hairy pack animal that has a big butt, has long skinny legs, kind of an elf's face, a very long fuzzy coat that they shave off and use as yarn. Obviously. Well, Jackie was somewhat close. She fox are a type of primate. Yeah! There are technically nine different species of she fox, but I'm going to describe von der Deckens. Whoa. They have an all black face that is encircled by a hood of white fur and their bodies are essentially all covered in that white fur other than the face and then their ears and their palms. I would say they look like a hairless rat wearing a sheep onesie. So they kind of have that gelfling face from the dark crystal but with a little sheep suit on. At least for the Vanderdecken's Shifak. The fur is a silky, luxurious white, kind of like friend of the show Donut, everyone's favorite Shiba Inu. This is a very high-end sort of onesie. This is not an Amazon onesie. The, the body length of the Shifak is about 90 to 100 centimeters in total, but that's about half body and half tail. So the body from the head to the base of the tail is about 45 centimeters, and then from the base of the tail to the tip of the tail is another 45. Long tail. I'll quickly mention that the females tend to be a little larger than the males, but otherwise there isn't much physical sexual dimorphism. Males and females generally look the same, except for the females tend to be a little larger. You can draw a lady then. It'll be hard to tell that it's a lady, but you could draw a lady. Now let's talk a little bit more about the face. They have round forward facing eyes that are yellow in color other than the small black pupil in the center. And the eyes are fairly wide set. Is that because they got a big nose? Then to the nose. About level with the pupils is the bridge of the snout. And at the widest part of the snout, 
it's about in line with the center of the eyes. So if you can think of a koala face, it's the similar dimensions of eyes to snout face. The snout extends out a little bit from the face. I would estimate about four or five centimeters. But, and at the end of the snout is a little nostrilly nostrils. On the side of the head, about level with the eyes, are two ears. Are they just round like your hands? Are just they? Like my hands, round. She fox have arms and legs, just like us. But their legs are really long and strong. So the, the hind legs are much longer than the forelimbs, but the forelimbs don't look short in proportion to the body. It's just that they have really long, strong legs. So you're saying this isn't like a T-Rex situation where it's like, it's more like an ostrich? Well, like an ostrich doesn't have arms. <laughs> if you just think of a person with longer legs than arms, like us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, think of any of us. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of each limb, they have hands and feet that are perfect for gripping tree trunks. And this is true of both the hands and the feet. They don't spend much time on the ground, so they don't need good walking feet. They need good gripping feet. Climbing hands. Lastly, I'm going to give you a context to place your shifak. Generally, you will find them in the trees, either jumping upright or wrapped around a tree. So if I were to draw mine flying through the air, it being like. It would, be, it would be like that long jumper where it's upright and the limbs are outstretched. Long jumper. Oh, but up, not out. Good posture. Up. All right. You guys get to draw in. I'll get to describing. She fox are primates from the genus Propithecus, which is a type of lemur. Lemurs are endemic to the island of Madagascar and are found on no other land area in the world. That's pretty wild when you think about it because there are about 100 different species of lemurs and they're all found on this one island nation. Although it is a very big island, Madagascar is larger than California and just a bit smaller than Texas. The very limited habitat of lemurs is one of the reasons why they are considered the most endangered mammal on earth. And all nine species of she fox are either endangered or critically endangered. The Propithecus genus can be divided into nine species. Physically, the different species have different fur colorations and slightly different sizes, but they also live on different areas on Madagascar. So they each have their own little, mostly non-overlapping zone of habitat. They are primarily an arboreal mammal, meaning that they live in the trees, and their powerful legs allow them to propel their bodies from tree to tree at speeds of upwards of 30 kilometers per hour, and they can jump up to 30 feet between trees. They remain upright when they jump, rotating their bodies 180 degrees from one tree to the next. These amazing jumping skills allow them to leap from tree to tree, sometimes from rock to rock, with incredible speed and agility. But what makes them really great at jumping on trees makes them pretty bad at navigating on the land. You will rarely see these animals on the ground, but when you do, they really awkwardly hop around on two feet like a toddler in a bouncy castle because their forelimbs are shorter than their back limbs, so they can't run around on four feet like other primates do. So they just have to awkwardly jump. Evolutionarily speaking, the lemur branch diverged earlier than other primate species, so they retain a lot of primitive mammal features that aren't seen on other primates like us. So they have, for example, wet noses, and they rely more on their smell than their sense of sight. They also differ from other primates in that they have a matriarchal society, meaning that females are dominant over males. The name Shifak itself is an automatopoeia for one of their alarm calls, and they make a number of other noises. They sneeze a lot, it's like, it's like they're holding it in like that. Okay. The last thing we need to talk about is mating. Shifox mate only once per year, in January-ish, 
and I've seen varying reports on whether it's one week of the year or even one day of the year. But they basically have their one time of year Shabak Bacchanalia when they're able to find some love and make some babies. So much pressure. So I propose that we make a high school prom night style movie about the Shafaks who are nervously anticipating their day of mating each year and their week of love. It's January! Let's do it! How many exist again? Not a lot. Maybe they should try doing it a little more. Yeah. Make the effort, guys. Just kidding. Their habitat is shrinking and they're being hunted. And it's all because of humans. Because mating occurs once a year, births also happen around the same time. Just like one of those weird pregnancy packs. So maybe instead of just one movie, we can make a whole mini series about these guys. So, all together, these are strong, empowered females whose territory is shrinking, but they're really cool and they're really good jumpers. So, protect the shitbox. And with that, let's see your drawings. Three, two, one. Oh boy, they're so good. Oh, Anna, I got a baby. Really good. Last minute baby, threw it all there. Ooh, I like it, I like it. Those yeah. are really good. It's so good with its little digits. This is him jumping on the ground. Oh yeah, woo, 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 horrible. He's so silly, he can't walk. Oh, they're very cute. And they do look like they're wearing uh, pajamas. Those legs for days. What you would think the abominable snowman would be, but skinnier and smaller. Yeah, like the tropical abominable snowman. Um, in case you guys didn't see, I wrote, I'm coming for you a uh, slightly smaller male because clearly I am a lady Shabak. <laughs> is that his law? <laughs> what is that one? What is that one, Anna? It has a baby. <laughs> what is your baby, Jackie? Okay, well, I like Anna's. Anna, nail it. Do either of you know the show Zaboomafu? Yes, I do. Zaboomafu is a kid's wildlife show that ran from 1999 to 2001. And it was hosted by the Krat Brothers along with their Shifak sidekick named Zaboomafu. Oh my god! The lemur that played Zaboomafu is named Jovian. Jovian came from the Duke Lemur Center, which has the most diverse collection of lemurs anywhere other than Madagascar. And unfortunately, he passed away in 2014 at age 20. However, he was a married man and had at least 12 offspring. And his obituary said that he had intelligent yellow eyes. Aww. What more can you hope for in your obituary? We'll provide a link to the Duke Lemur Center in the description box below. So now I want you to play Where's That Scent Gland? So if you remember from episode one, the Garinoke had their scent glands in their knees, as well as their eyes and their hooves. Mm -hmm. And the peccary had scent glands on its back. So I thought it would be fun if you guys could try and figure out where the shafak scent gland is. So there's one gland that is present on both males and females, but then males have a second scent gland. I'm going straight for the crotch. Anna's got one of them. Both males and females have a scent gland in their anogenital region. But for some reason with males, I feel like it's their, their belly and their chest with that little bit of lack of hair going on. Ding, ding, ding. It was the chest. Good job, Anna. If you see particularly the really white shafox, you'll notice that the males are brown right here. And it's not because their fur is that color. It's because they're rubbing their chest all over the place and getting it dirty. <laughs> they're just gross, dirty boys. Rather, 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 I'm male. <laughs> Thanks to everyone for watching. If you tried your hand at drawing a Shafak, send us your pictures on social media. You can find us on Twitter at What Wildlife and on Instagram at What in the Wildlife. The links for those sites can be found in the description box below, as well as more links for where you can find additional information about the Shafak. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you loved it, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode of what in the wildlife? Yeah! See you next time. Bye! -bye.